over there. <laughs> It's true, I told him to put his camera away. But in my defense, he publicly called me a dork. <laughs> on the internet. And as we all know, if it's on the internet, it's true. So, yeah, I had a get out of jail free card. <laughs> with respect to Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Got an old friend, had a little band together back around 95. Back in the early 2000s, I followed a local indie music blog called You Ain't No Picasso. One day they wrote about a band that would be playing at a local bistro. The band was named Van de Veer. They also posted a preview of their music. After listening, I got tickets for my wife, and that was my first encounter with Mark Charles Heidegger. Today, I'm much more familiar with the man and his music, and I'm proud to call him my friend. So Mark, I think first things first, we need to get some stuff out in the open, clear the air a little bit. On Facebook, <laughs> I referred to you as a local dork who made good. Mm. It ruffled some feathers. It did. So I'm gonna give you a chance to come at me both barrels here. Well, A, I haven't made good. <laughs> so it wasn't completely accurate. And be guilty, guilty as charged. Okay. On the dork accusations. So I was half right in the description. Half right. okay. You were half right. I took. I tried to take offense, but then I quickly realized resistance was futile. Okay. Well. So. So we're okay. We're good. Okay. I'm no pugilist. So <laughs> thank, we're fine. Thank God for me. <laughs> so the other little bit of business we should probably clear up is Lex Rocks is celebrating Lexington. You don't actually live in Lexington, but what is your Lexington connection? Well, I grew up here. So and I grew up in Jasmine County and Lexington. So first 27 years of my life, or that's not entirely accurate. Anyhow, the bulk of my life was here in central Kentucky. So you are a local dork? Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Just have it made good. It's the, coming. I have a good The dork part was accurate. <laughs> local was accurate. Uh, no, I moved to D.C. Uh, my wife and I, we moved there 11 years ago. 12 years ago, actually. And then we came back to Kentucky last year. Got rugrats. Rugrats need grandparents. Gotcha. Yeah. Absolutely. So we decided to come back. Okay. And, and Louisville was always a place <clears throat> that I enjoyed visiting, we enjoyed touring through, we had a lot of friends there, I just felt like I'd like to try a new city in an old state. So yeah. that was the... Good combo. Yeah, that was the, that was the happy medium. Okay. I'm going to describe something. You slap my hand when I get it wrong, okay? <clears throat> Is this this game? Uh, close. Okay. <laughs> Verbally slap my hand. <laughs> So right now you're touring in support of an album, The Wild Mercury, yes. and uh, I gather from listening and from talking to you personally, The Wild Mercury is kind of a description of the fallout, the effects that touring can have on your personal life and your family life. True uh, or false? In part, that's, I would say that's accurate. Uh, I would widen the scope and say just this profession, just in general. Yeah. It kind of runs counter to, um, I don't know, maybe conventional familyhood mm -hmm. or my idea of what that looks like or maybe what my childhood was. I don't, I don't know exactly what. I just know that each year it gets more challenging to yeah. strike the right balance, especially as, as, as my kids get older. I mean, it's... You, know, you have your kids. The first thing you do is you you, um, you, so you find yourself, and I, you can relate to this, but you find yourself in that sort of, that, that first period is just just being a state of constant awe of parenthood and a child. And then suddenly it gets very, very real. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's not a theoretical challenge. Right, right, right. right. Uh, so I feel like a lot of the songs 
that I wrote for the Wild Mercury were written in that theoretical period, maybe, but by the time we were actually in the studio making that record and then touring behind it and in the years in between, yeah, it's just become more and more complicated, but I just think that's the, I don't think that's unique to, to music. To yeah, music. Yeah. I think that's the parenthood. Sure. I think that's just growing up. <laughs> David Bazan, uh, also Undertow, yeah. uh, he has a song, Fewer Moving Parts Mean Fewer Broken Pieces, where he has the line, um, if you make a reference to some trouble that you know, will it help you keep it under control? So in a sense, is that what the Wild Mercury, Wild Mercury was? Was it kind of saying, hey, I have noticed this, I'm going to put a pin in it and, refer and hope that one day by referencing it, I, I kind of, we can deal with it. Well, isn't acceptance or acknowledgement the first yeah, yeah. stage of, <laughs> of some, dealing with yeah of so, something? So you're on you're on the road uh, of recovery. <laughs> of recovery, right? Uh, yeah, I I guess I just I had not I'm not familiar with that David Bazan song or lyric, but I do think acknowledgement is crucial. You can't fly blind yeah. or blindly. You have to. I do think you have to proceed with eyes wide open and clear vision, uh, especially when the consequence of doing so is very, very real. You get home and you realize, wow, I just missed, I just missed an entire month. Yeah, yeah. That a whole lot has changed. You know, one month in the in, in the span of a four year old or five year old. That's, that's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a, lot. a big chunk of their life. It's a year to you and me. So <clears throat> there are real. Sacrifices that not just you make as a musician or, or as a professional, creative professional, but your closest, you know, loved ones, they make those sacrifices too. Yeah. And there's very little glory in it. <laughs> but, I mean, I've had other gigs and. You'll take this one. <laughs> I found very little glory in those gigs too. Yeah, but. not a lot of glory out there to be found for anybody. I honestly, I think glory is a, it's a Hollywood construct. <laughs> so, or a byproduct at the very least. Construct. I don't <laughs> yeah, know you're if probably it exists. Right. I really don't know if it exists. <laughs> so I'm going to go uh, armchair psychologist for a second here. Okay. So um, you're traveling, uh, promoting an album, Wild Mercury. These songs are kind of a conversation with your audience about what it's like to have a family inside of this setting and, mm -hmm. and the effect on them. You've usually traveled as a two-piece with mm -hmm. Rose. Yes. To tour with this album, you basically put a band together, Yeah. sort of creating a family for yourself for the yeah. road to be able to have this conversation. Yeah. Have I, have I, does that, are you like, oh my gosh, I hadn't thought of that? Or you're well, like, no, that's obvious. No, that's accurate, but I think I would take it a step further and save it. We made the consciously made the record with a family of musicians because I felt like the material was heavy enough that I felt like oh I, I don't I can't do this alone. Gotcha. I need I need I need a you need a support staff I, kind of right there. Yeah. Yeah. I need okay. I need an inner circle and uh, Robbie and Justin and Dwayne of course uh, all have been playing integral parts in. Vanderbilt Records dating back to 2006, the first one we recorded in Tom since, I don't know, 2009, 2010, he's been uh, ever present too. So this was a conscious decision that we bring these people together to, to sort of make this body of work um, greater. You know, than the sum of its parts, right? It and then sense. live, Blake has been touring with us, which has been fantastic. And he, he's not a family man; he's got a couple kids too, yeah. so he knows, he knows the, he knows the. These are not new waters. The routine, no, and and he struggles with the same logistical challenges that that I do. So but, speaking of your band, uh, of, <clears throat> of interest to Lexingtonians, your band is mostly, with the exception of Rose, made up of Lexingtonians. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name each band member, and right. I want you to give me two sentences. 
first things that come to your mind. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with Rose. All right. Oh. Doesn't have to be two sentences. If you have to go more, that's fine. Ethereal. Enigmatic. Singular. Those aren't sentences. Those are just. That's adjectives. fine. That's it. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um. An indispensable partner. Gotcha. Okay. J. Tom Nato. <laughs> asshole. Let's just say it, asshole. I mean, <laughs> goading. <laughs> well read. Well read. Well read. Yeah. Um, professional and uh, a team player. Robert Senza. Mercurial. <laughs> That's the only word I have for Robbie. <laughs> I mean, he's he's enigmatic, man. He's he's like legendary in real time. Yeah, that makes sense. Like Blake Cox. Oh, well adjusted, <laughs> handsome, <laughs> agreeable, smiling more often than just not. Just everything you want on <laughs> yeah. a tour or in life. Oh, say, yeah. just great behind the wheel. Yeah. Gives a great mic check during sound check. Just awesome. the best. As we try to ask all our guests this, and my, the audience is probably getting tired of the setup, but it'd be the same setup every time. <clears throat> Uh, not assuming anything about your worldview, what maybe this was given to you by a creator, maybe you came up with it yourself, but why are you here? Let's say you've got seven to eight decades on this planet, what do you have I to get done? Seven to eight decades. <laughs> I would say to live and love and learn as much as humanly possible. That's a good answer. Yeah, I would say that's, that's my charge. I think that's <clears throat> the human charge. Yeah. When without not without a lot of direction, I, 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 yeah, I feel like the cosmos is a yeah, it's a daunting place <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, my kid, my six-year-old said, "Papa, space isn't really out there. We're we're in space too. <laughs> Earth is a part of space too." I felt like. That's profound. Yeah. And I hope you never forget that, man. Yeah, for a six year old, that's yeah. pretty, yeah. It just always remember that. Space isn't out there. You're it's in just, space. You're in space. It's just, it looks a little different from our vantage point. Sure. <laughs> we have an atmosphere, <laughs> gravity. <laughs> Last question. Uh, with, with Lex Rocks being a web series devoted to what's great about Lexington, <clears throat> knowing you're familiar with Lexington. Oh, yeah. What do you? What's good about it? Specifically, music, culture, art, kind of that realm. What do you? What do you like about Lexington? Well, I feel like the people who call Lexington home have a vested interest in um, representing the city and being proud of the city and being not necessarily a cheerleader, but um, a vocal proponent of the city. I, it's, just, it's the people. The people here are incredible. Yeah. This is home for me. I live down the road. But yeah, this is where I'm from, and this is where I feel most at home, and the people here. It's, yeah. I think a community is, is, is made up of people, not, not trends or you know, dining hot spots or sure. or Bobo streets or <laughs> you know events. I think it's 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 the people that you know. DC is totally different. Seeing having lived there for eleven years, I mean that is a that is a place where people go to. People aren't generally from there. Yeah. However, when you meet with when you meet the people that are from there, they have a different you know. Take there's a, there's a different strain sure. of, of 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 person that lives in a place where they're from. Yeah. Yeah. And I think moving away and coming back, I mean, I think part of the reason we came back to Kentucky was just we, for 11 years, everything 
that we appreciated about Kentucky just sort of became amplified over the, over the years. We thought, we, we need to go back. Yeah. yeah. We need to go back. I, I need to be around my people. Well, we're glad you're back. I am too. I, uh, <laughs> when I first became aware of you, you were, uh, in every sense of the word, meaningful to me. You were a rock star, and I'm excited to say that you're my friend now, and uh, I appreciate you. <laughs> hey, having. man. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. What about that rock star thing? <laughs> <laughs> just uh, from, from my perspective, just well, take it. And then <laughs> sure. Sure, I'll take it. You and my mom. <laughs> That's all that matters. Those are the two opinions that are going to come. There you go, man. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Yeah, man. See you. Later.